Hello and welcome back to this instalment of Vicky Talks About Book, calls it a review and then just sort of talks about it. This is The Wicked King by Holly Black and today we are discussing all of the trauma that has been caused by this book. So this book is crazy and yeah, let's just talk about my feelings of, about this book. Where is my phone? Phone here! There you are. Okay, so I'm just going to basically talk about um, the plot of this book before actually going into what I feel about it. <laughs> I'm sure you all know about this book already because it's not like I'm talking about a book that has been under wraps or anything um, and it has like great publicity and everything but still I just want to talk about it because I feel like maybe if somebody hasn't read it and don't know what it's about then I am here to provide that information. I'm just gonna say first like this is a sequel and if you haven't read the first book and you want to read the first book and stuff like that, you might be spoiled. I'm I'm not exactly sure, but if you want to take the risk, then sure, uh, be my guest and just keep on watching and stuff. So this book is centered around a mortal called Jude who lives in Fairyland called Elfame. She and her twin sister and half-sister were brought here well there to Elfame by the man who killed their parents. So she has risen to power by manipulating people and through scheming and basically just managing to keep her head cool in chaotic situations. Jude hates Carden who is her rival in basically everything and he <coughs> <coughs> just lost my voice <coughs> and he hates her too but, I mean, can all their feelings toward each other be hate? Because, like, it's so consuming, but you get the feeling that there is so much more to it than that. And there is, like, some stuff going on that tell you that they are sort of, like, into each other and stuff. And then throughout this, this book, stuff happens. I'm not going to go into much more than that without sort of, I kind of already have spoiled it, but still. So there is this threat, <laughs> so there is a threat to uh, Jude and Carden's kingdom and one to Carden's life. Jude must face enemies from all sides and according to an old foe, even somebody she trusts will betray her. And I mean... If this woman is manipulative and scheming and, you know, she has been betrayed before, who can she trust? In a land where people are immortal, the world has gone cruel and petty. One must be ruthless to get ahead, and Jude can be more than ruthless. One thing that I really have to say about this book is that I think that I had to sort of like question my mental state at some point because Jude and Carlin are like super bad for each other, they're so unhealthy together and you know <clears throat> I just still want them to be together. I, I don't understand it, I just want them to be happy and be cute together but they are also super unhealthy for each other and their relationship is super destructive. So yeah that's the thing and I just I want to say that I think that this book is really well written as per usual with Holly Black and I just want to say that she has created this unbearable world um, <clears throat> with characters who are power hungry and some are fair, some are well-meaning, some are selfish and some are super gullible and some are really cruel. Um, I'm in awe of great character building and how their appearances sort of shape and fit perfectly into their personality um, <clears throat> which is like a great thing to do with Faye I mean you can actually it's just super you can do that and the fashion 
I just have to say like the the clothes and the description of the clothes in this book are just mm, they're perfect they go with everything and I just feel like super inspired to make clothes now because it's just so pretty so there are some parts in this book where Jude is in compromising situations and I feel like those parts weren't super explained. Um, I would have wanted a bit more detail and I'm not talking about like, if, when I say compromising situations I don't necessarily mean anything sexual. I just want to put that out there. I can mean other stuff as well. I just feel like there were some parts of this book left unsaid. Um, but yeah, you know, we are getting a third book so she might clear some stuff up there. I'm not really sure. We'll, we'll have to see. These scenes that were a bit not very... well, they were explained, it's just that they could have been better. I just feel like those parts just left me feeling like outside of my body, like my heart or something was outside of the self and I was just like, get back in there you ghoul. Now it feels like I'm just sort of like complaining. <laughs> but I just want to put it out there that I read this book in one day. Um, it was for my Tributes Readathon thing that we have, like there's a group of us, we call ourselves the Bookster Tributes because like Hunger Games and stuff and I am District 12, yeah. But yeah, I am District 12, if you want some coal, hit me up. Yeah, so I read this book in one day and I just have to say like I wouldn't have done that if I didn't love the book, if I didn't love the book and it was just awesome, I really enjoyed um, like the plot and I think that it was really cool to see the um, land under the sea. I'm not really sure what it was called, I'm, I keep forgetting, but Orlog was the queen there and there were mermaids and they were really cool and I loved that whole thing even though it was super scary. Uh, <laughs> but I loved that part, it was basically my favourite part of the book even though it was super nasty and scary um so yeah it was cool to see like a different side of Elfo. and yeah i think that was it for this video thank you for watching and if you liked it then please give it a big thumbs up and or subscribe and i will see you in the next video goodbye in a land where the people have <laughs> ah! In a land where people <laughs> and Jude can be more than ruthless. Crap. Um. <laughs> that was so lame.